Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about some hidden tips and tricks of Figma that some people don't use. You can consider them features or you can consider them just things that are very subtle but very useful, but people don't use them that much, I guess, or maybe are not even aware of them. So the first thing I'd like to bring up is the command P, all global search. So if you press command P, I'm just gonna go here, press command P. As you can see, we have we can search for different menu items, we can search for commands, and we can search for plugins. So as an example, if I just wanted to go ahead and see the shortcuts of all the different elements, I can see them. I can see, okay, I can copy SPNG as well. And then most particularly when I'm using plugins, I have so many plugins. It's really hard to just scroll and find them. For example, if I have to find Unsplash, I'm not gonna go into the plugin menu every time and then find Unsplash and click on them. I'm just gonna press Command P and say Unsplash and then press Enter. That's how I use Unsplash, and that's obviously gonna open the plugin up. So this command P, even though it's very simple and some people may use them, but I want you to develop a habit of start using it instead of, let's say, going to different menu items or, or even remembering all the shortcuts. I sometimes don't remember all of the shortcuts, right? For example, the color picker. Sometimes I may forget what the shortcut of the color picker is. Um, I was pressing like option C just right now, rather it's control C. So if I just wanna see like what the shortcut of the color picker is, I can press command P, I can say color picker or pick color. As you can see, I can see the shortcut here as well. And I can obviously just do that as well. So again, really important to use the global search for specifically for plugins because you can't really have shortcuts on everything. And it's really cumbersome to actually go into this menu and search for plugins. So that's one. The second thing I'd like to bring up is copying SVGs. Now this is also extremely important. Sometimes you have different SVGs in the browser that you wanna have or add inside of your Figma file. So I'm just gonna go ahead, open this. Now this is an example of different SVGs that are included in the material design icon. These are SVGs included in hero icons. Now imagine if you wanna go ahead and actually include these in your design file. The really easy way of doing it is actually going on a particular SVG. And obviously it says copy SVG here because that's a feature but even if you did not have that in any page if you actually have an svg on the right as you can see here i'm just going to zoom in on the right if you have any svg markup like this on chrome you can just press command c and that's copied the svg now you can just go here into your design let's say i'm just going to go here and i'm going to press command v here's the svg here's the shape you can go ahead and like edit it you can increase the stroke if you want obviously i've made that a bit much but you can do whatever it is that you want with it and that's the SVG. You don't have to go ahead, right click it, copy it, do whatever, just press Command C and copy it. Command C, Command V. Figma allows you to do something like that, so it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna show you how to do that on a different uh, element here. So here's an SVG here on material design icons. I'm gonna press Command C. I'm gonna go here and just press Command V. Here's the material design icon. As you can see, it's also a shape and it has points so on and so forth. So that's the other thing I wanted to bring up. One other thing I wanted to bring up is, let's say if you want to extract this image as a PNG or as a JPG, um, or maybe something else, right? On any page that you're having a look at it. So if you're on Chrome, Chrome provides like certain developer capabilities to do that. I'm gonna press Command Shift P. If I press that, I have a bunch of options, but if I want to take a screenshot of a very specific element, first of all, what I need to do is I need to select that element on the right. If the element is selected on the right, like you can just go ahead and like click this icon. And if let's say you want to select something, you can just press select the element here, or you can just go to the element and just select it. Like I usually just use this button with the shortcut of command shift C. Now that I have this image selected, it's already an image, so obviously I don't necessarily have to extract it, but let's see, we have something like this. It has a lot of markup, it has some buttons as well, and I just wanna extract this whole box as an image. I'm just gonna press Command Shift P and I'm gonna say Node, Capture Node Screenshot. Once I do that, as you can see, the screenshot is going to be downloaded here, and then I can just go ahead and include it. And here's the screenshot that I basically just copied. It's only specifically copied the area that I had selected on the right. And that's an easy way of just copying images if you want, even if they contain certain HTML elements. So that's the third thing that I wanted to bring up. One other thing I'd like to bring up now is copying file links. 
Now imagine you have this file. How do you go ahead and copy this link? Currently, most designers, even me myself, and sometimes in, um, instinctively, or maybe in the past, actually used to go here, say copy link, and used to copy link like that. But that's not, some, that's not the way pros do it. You should just press Command L and that copies the link for you. If you select a particular element and press Command L, that also copies the link as well. And now if I, let's say, paste this link, as you can see, this is the link to the file. You don't necessarily, and if you have a node selected, it's gonna copy the link to a node. So I'm gonna press Command L again. This is the, uh, a link to the file. As you can see, this is here. And now if I press Command, if I select an artboard, I'm gonna press Command L. As you can see, frame link copy to clipboard. If you select a frame, obviously it's gonna copy the link to the frame. So just an easy way of doing it without necessarily going to going here, then sharing, then link to selected frame, all of that. You don't have to do that and you should not do that. So that's the fourth thing I think. Like I'm not, I'm not even gonna keep count because I have a lot of information to share right now. The other thing I'd like to bring up is the new shortcut that Figma has introduced, which is space to replace. Now imagine, if I wanted to replace this second block with this one, or maybe I wanted to replace this, uh, this one, this big one with this small one, I can just press copy and I can go here. And I previously used to do paste to replace here because the shortcut was uh, slightly complex, but now they have improved the shortcut. They have made it command shift R, which is pretty okay. So once I do that, as you can see, we have the image here and that's replaced. I can now go here, I can do the same thing, copy, and then paste it here and that's done as well. So really easy way of copying elements and replacing them. And anytime you have to replace something, I would definitely recommend doing something like this instead of manually going ahead, cutting the previous one and then doing the other stuff because that, that really takes a lot of time. So that's the other thing I wanted to bring up. Now, one more thing that I want to bring up which is extremely important. Imagine the font size for this has been messed up. I have this like, let's say 50. I just wanna go ahead and actually copy this font size and the styling, maybe the line height is also messed up. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna see 55. I'm gonna change the font color to maybe some weird color like blue. Now, if I just have to, obviously I can revert it because this is a component, but imagine if this was not a component and I just wanted to copy the styles here and make these both the same. How would you do that? Well, a good way of doing that is actually, or a bad way of doing that is actually linking the styles manually. So you see, okay, this is text MD normal. I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna try and select it. But hey, it's it's not even present there. Why? Because that particular design library is not even linked. So you can't really go ahead and actually just link this directly. But even if you had that present, it's really cumbersome to just go here and then search for the different particular style and then link it and then link the color again. That's That's a really foolish way of doing it. The ideal way is you just go here, press Command Option C, go here and press Command V. That basically just copies the style of the element that you previously had selected. So you're gonna click on it, Command Option C, that's gonna copy all of the styles for this particular thing. You go here and press Command V. Similarly, if I had to copy this style, I could say Command Option C, go here, Command V. That basically duplicated everything. Now you can see it's the text minus MD medium, we have the primary 700, and that's a really easy way of copying elements. Now, this particular copy styles feature is really important because it not only copies all of the styles like font sizing, colors, and all of that, but it also copies fills. Now imagine if I had to replace, since these two images are sitting side by side and they're really common, I maybe just wanna go ahead and replace the center image with this one. I'm just gonna press Command Option C copy the fill as well and the shadow and I'm gonna go here and command V. That basically copies the image as well that's being used as a fill inside of Figma. So that's really important as well and I would definitely recommend you doing that. One other thing I'd like to point out is sometimes maybe you're actually creating uh, some shapes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, and the, the thing that I'm actually bringing up is zero pixel frames. So sometimes you're actually creating an auto layout like this. This is in a text element. And now let's say you wanna give an underline to it. Now, maybe some people don't like this large, this underline, I'm just gonna go ahead and like make this font really large. Maybe they don't like this underline. Maybe they want this underline to be, let's say positioned a bit below. So I'm not gonna recommend using command U to underline it. Rather, I'm gonna first of all, make this an auto layout. 
Now that we have this in auto layout, I'm just going to move this down. I'm going to remove the spacing that we have here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create a frame. Now this is a frame, as you can see, I'm also going to create a rectangle inside of this frame. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this frame an auto layout as well. I'm going to give this a fill container and I'm going to give this a fill container as well. And we're going to remove the padding from here. Now, as you can see, this is a, let's just go ahead and actually uh, give this a four pixel size. Let's just go ahead and give this a color. Now, imagine and just imagine that you actually have this element without this frame the height of this element is 121 but if i introduce this border frame i'm just going to go ahead and add it here this is 125 now imagine if you wanted to give this frame without necessarily having it take, having it take any particular height at all because you just want to let's say customize this to a different color you want the underline to be a different color but you also want it to respect the text size in order to do that you have to go to the frame here whether it's an auto layout or whether it's a default frame you can now go ahead and give it a fixed height and instead of four if you try to press zero it's always going to revert to one so if you want to go ahead and actually give this and i what i did was as you can see as I, as soon as i made one the border became one and that's because it's clipping the content anything that's exceeding this container it was being clipped so i removed that so now you can see the whole whole pixel border now, if you want to go ahead and give this zero, you need to press 0 0.0001. If you do something like that, um, it's going to be again zero. And now if you go here, the text size is 121, no matter how large the border is. If even if I make this border, let's say 50 pixels large, the text, this frame automatically is always going to be the size that this particular text is. If I went ahead and changed this to 120, 132, the frame size is now going to be 132 because the border now is no longer taking a size because it's in a zero pixel frame. So it's really important to know how to add zero pixel frames because you maybe don't, you maybe want to give certain effects or certain type of elements and not have them take any space in the layout. So that's really important as well. The other thing I'd like to uh, bring up is the ability to command click on elements. Now imagine if I had to select this read post. Um, button it's really hard for me especially if you have let's say a lot of frames around it so I'm gonna create multiple frames around this so as you can see I have I don't know how many frames if I press enter you can see on the left I have so many frames inside it's really hard for me to go ahead and click on read post an easy way to click on or select this read post button is actually command click it if you command click it let me just go ahead and expand my sidebar if you command click it it's gonna select the the smallest element and I actually have so many shapes that you can't even see it so I'm just going to remo remove some shapes or some frames around it so you can see it so if I click on this as you can see the text the least element or the lowest element in the panels list or the sidebar or the layers list is going to be selected and then I can press just simply shift enter or Figma also introduced a new shortcut here which is the uh, backslash I think if you press that and that's going to be coming on the screen it's going to go to its parent so now I can easily select the button. But there's also another way to directly select this read post button. Now that I know that it's a button, I can press, I can basically instead of just pressing command click because that's never really gonna select the button thing that I want to select, you can just press command and then press the right click button. Once you do that, as you can see, you have the button here, you can just click on it and it's selected. Similarly, if I wanna select, let's say, this particular element I can just go here and I can select the heading as you can see as I'm hovering over it it's actually telling me or informing me this is the frame 2 it's presenting the bounding box as to what exactly I'm selecting and it's really easy to just go ahead and select elements I'm just going to go ahead and ungroup these so we don't have that mental noise here now that's that one other thing I'd like to also highlight is if we just go here here's an example now image imagine if i wanted to crop this image i would go here i can click on crop and i can do whatever right because previously it was crop and i have to change it to fill but it's it's really it's it takes some time for me to just go from here to clicking a really small shape here or a small icon here if you just want to go ahead and let's say just open the image properties you can just press 
option and then double click on the image and that's going to open it and you can now go crop or do whatever so similarly now since this image is actually being cropped i can just double click it and i can organize it in whatever way i want instead of going here opening it and then doing it so it saves you some time without necessarily being able to click on something really small so that's one other thing that i wanted to highlight which is um, the option double click to get the image properties one other or one last thing or two last things that I would like to highlight is if you want to focus on some element on in Figma, let's say if I want to focus on this, I can select it and I can press shift two. That's going to select it. That's going to go ahead and select it. And that's just going to focus it like not selected. That's going to focus it and you can see it. Similarly, if I wanted to, let's say, focus on something like this, I'm going to press shift two and that's going to select it. But imagine you're somewhere here and I want to select this whole frame without necessarily zooming out because that's the purpose of me trying to have this into view. If I'm manually zooming out and then focusing on it or doing whatever, that defeats the purpose. Now imagine if I just wanted to focus on this layer, which is frame three. I just want to focus it no matter where I am. I can obviously just go ahead and select frame three and then press shift two. That's going to again zoom, zoom the thing to my selection. But let's say even if I have something like this selected, I can press command and I can just go ahead and click on this layer icon. Once I double click on this layer icon, once I do that, it's going to focus this. If I double click on this heading, it's going to focus that. If I double click on this, it's going to go ahead and focus that. If I double click on this, it's going to go ahead and focus that. Obviously, it's not the same as shift two because shift two actually zooms to selection. But what this uh, command and double click does it, it preserves the natural size to some extent to some extent it doesn't necessarily always preserve it but it's really easy for you to just go ahead and press command and then just focus on elements if i want to focus on frame 4 i can do that if i want to focus on the blog header page it's going to go ahead and do that so those are just some minor figma advanced tips that you may not necessarily use and you may not even feel the need to do so right now because you may not be working at that advanced of a level but if you're doing a lot of these things you're working on these advanced levels then this may actually prove to be helpful for you in the future. That's going to be pretty much it for this video. If you like this video, do subscribe, do hit the like button, do leave me a comment in the comment section or ask any questions. Let me know which particular feature that you liked, hidden feature you liked in this video and any other video that you would like me to cover next. So that's going to be pretty much it. Take care. Bye.